Hi everybody, my name's Claire, thank you for joining me. I'm about to do painting number five of my autumnal themed series. So I have done so far, I've done four paintings, all with the same colours, the autumnal colours. The one behind me is, is the ring pour I did from this range. Um, all of the same colours but different techniques. So today, number five, so again, identical colours. There's nine beautiful autumnal colours. Um, but today I'm going to be doing a double swipe. So I've already done a swipe with a cell activator. This is different. This is a, a swipe with silicon in the paint. And I'm going to be swiping um, all the colours across themselves and then back again. So it should create some lovely um, silicon cells. So let me show you the colours we're using. So these are the colours, I love them. They're just so happy, so much warmth from these colours. So let me go through and show you. Um, in the Dutch pour, I had a slightly different green, um, but if I, I'm using this one, Crawford and Black Sap Green. If I add a little bit of white to it, I get a very similar green to the other pour, which was the Chromium Oxide Green. Um, I'm using two Pebio Studio Acrylics colours, um, the Gold and the Iridescent Orange Yellow, uh, Graduate Acrylic Pearl White by De La Rowney, Another De La Rowney, but a System 3 acrylic, Thalo Turquoise. I've added a little bit of white to this. Um, it's just, it's such a dark colour. I want it, I, I'd, I'd be happy if it looked like that, but when paintings dry, they go darker. So I'm worried that this would dark, dry so dark, it would almost look black. So I've added a little bit of white to allow for it to go darker. And then the same with this one here. This is Amsterdam Permanent Red Violet. I've added just a little bit of white just to lighten it again. So that when it's dried, it will then naturally darken. Two more, Amst or a few more Amsterdam colours. I've got Pewter, Permanent Blue Violet. Again, a hint of white in there. And, and then the Amsterdam Bronze. The white I've used is this one, Amsterdam White. And I've used that to, to lighten the colours. So my paint pour recipe for this is slightly different to normal. I've used my homemade PVA glue pouring medium, which I'll, I'll link, I'll put in the description, um, but I've do used a different ratio. So in each of these pots, I have put 50 grams of flood fluoratrol, but then 40 grams of paint. So slightly less paint. I normally do 50-50. So this is more 54, 50 to 40, um, because I want them just slightly runnier. Um, so let's get started. I'm using the same 40 centimetre square canvas. I'm using the same canvas for all paintings in this series. Um, I've hammered in the push pins in the back and I've levelled the canvas. So I'm going to pour the paint on. Oh, I've put in three drops of this in each of the cups. So spot on treadmill silicon. And it's the silicon that's going to create the cells when I heat it up with the blowtorch. I've got nine colours, which means there's a middle colour. So the white is the middle colour. I am going to be pouring bands of the colour along here. In fact, what I could do is just draw some lines on just so I get it, get it roughly right. So if I said that was the middle, it's just rough, a rough line there. So that's what that's going to be the centre of where I'm going to pour one of the bands. Right, very, very rough, but that's roughly, um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine bands of colour. So the white, in fact, I can start in any place there. Let's start in order. I'm going to use this order. I've mixed up the metallic colours and um, I've spread out the blues and the greens and then the pinks and the purples. So I'm literally just doing bands of colour. I'll save a little bit for a minute. I haven't gone off the edge yet. In fact, let's go off the edge. There's no point waiting.
fact, I'm going to just put some of the colour down. And then I'm going to, once I've got all the colours on and I can look at the amount of each or the gap, the area I allowed for each colour, then I'll come back and add some more. Just to try and get the bands as evenly sized as possible. I think I've realised why I quite like this colour scheme and it's because there's a risk of making brown with the colours I'm using. So, for example, orange and green together will make brown. But because this is an autumnal colour scheme, there is brown in autumn. So actually, it's quite it feels like quite a safe colour scheme because if I get brown, that just adds to it. That's part of it. In fact, I'll show you. I was going to use this, but I've decided not to. This colour is what I've used off the... I've, I've scraped off the work surface after I've painted before with this colour scheme. So if you combine all of these colours, it makes this most amazing shimmery brownie colour. It's absolutely stunning colour. Um, I was going to use it with this as well, but I decided it... Well, I just decided not to. I decided just to keep with the exact colours as I've used in the others and not add to that, that combination. Wow, that is a lot of paint on there, loads of paint. Right, I'm now going to get some kitchen roll. So a single piece of kitchen roll is too small. Actually, what about doing strips? No, I'm going to get a double piece of kitchen roll. So I've got two pieces of kitchen roll here and I'm just going to squirt them so that the edges are wet. The reason I do that is because it just makes the edge a little bit heavier and it's just going to stick to the paint a bit easier and it's going to help it to slide better. I think that's the plan. Right, now this is tricky because it's quite a big piece of kitchen roll. So I'm going to swipe. So I'm going to put the edge of this kitchen roll. First of all, I'm going to put it in the gold and then I'm going to pull across. I'm not going to go right to the edge of the gold. I'm just going to place it on so that it's all touching. And then slowly... I'm going, I'm just swiping through. Perfect. So now it looks just like a golden purple painting, but I'm going to do the same again now, but backwards. So get another double piece of kitchen roll. Give it a good spray. Actually, I'm going to, I've just noticed where I was about to swipe, the paper's coming apart there. So I'm not, I don't want that. I'm gonna use the other side. I'm just turning it around. So I'm gonna spray that now instead. I think it's the weight of the water is causing that to happen.
So same again, I'm going to put this on the other side now. So it's all touching. And then simply just drag it back. Great. So now gold is gone. Gold is all underneath there. But on the surface, you've now got the bronze and the turquoise, which is really interesting. Right, now the fun bit. So let's make some cells. So I'm just going to use the blowtorch. Um, I'm going to do it quite a lot over the canvas. And what will happen, the heat from the torch will cause the little bits of silicon throughout these paints to um, rise to the surface. And that's what creates the cells. So I will be doing this for quite a while because I want quite a lot of cells. Right, some of the colours are a bit lost at the moment. I can't see much orange or a little bit of orange there. But what will happen as I'm going to tilt it next, that hopefully will just help it to open up and you'll see more of the colours will, will come to the surface. Um, there's a big section of bronze here. That's the first bit to get rid of because because I've swiped, there's nothing coming up through. It's just, I think it's just bronze and not much else, out, else underneath. Yeah, I think I'm going to leave the torching. I'm going to do some swiping. Uh, sorry, some tilting. So I'm going to get some gloves on. I love this band of white through the centre. And because that's the pearl white, it will be really iridescent and shiny when this is dry. Right, so first of all, I'm going to try and remove some of the paint from this bronze edge. So there's, yeah, got lots of paint. This is brilliant. Lots of paint on here. I can feel it's heavy. It's moving well. So I'm just, first of all, walking the paint down the canvas towards that bronze. If I just pour it straight down, it will cause all the cells to elongate and they'll become very, very distorted. They will distort a bit, but... By walking it down, it actually just helps to keep some of the shape a bit better. Great, so that's off. So let's bring that back again. Wow, you know, I said there wasn't much orange. Look at this orange. Where has that just come from? Right, I just want to try and remove this corner. The weight of the paint's right down there, so it should be relatively easy to do. But I'm just constantly moving it. Yep, done that. Brilliant. Wow, it's suddenly just come alive. Let's come back. Now, my edges, these edges, need a little bit of attention. They need a bit of covering. They're not, they're just not covered. Now that could create a problem actually. So this edge here is done, is now beautiful. That edge would do, but I'd like to take off a bit of that, but these edges aren't. Actually, I think what I might do is just drag some of the paint over. I don't want to mess up the composition. I'll just try, I'll just try. this is the worst edge. In fact, let me show you. Can you see? It's, it's got lots of little white patches. So let's just try. And just very slowly walk it down that way. Oh my goodness, I love this. These colours, I love these autumnal colours. I'm going to be so sad when this comes to an end, this range I'm doing. I've got one more planned. And then I, that might be it. And then I just want to try and get the weight over here now, because again, there's a gold section there I'm not particularly keen on. And the cells are much, much smaller at that edge. So compare it compared to the rest. So if I can just get the weight of the paint down there now, I would just give a little stretch to that edge. And then I think that would be done. So 
getting slower. It's not moving as quickly now. And I'm constantly checking the rest of this to make sure I'm not overstretching. Can you see I've got a, light, a big ridge here? And that's because there's a lot of weight of this paint here and then it's really thin paint here. And that's because that's where I stretched, I, I swiped from. So that it was the same at the other end. I think I'm going to now just bring it back. Because I've just caught some of the edge of these gold cells. So that should stretch it out now. Because I'm worried about ruining the composition. Because the white cells in the centre are quite elongated now which I like actually. Right. Oh no, I don't like this line that I've created. I was hoping that would stretch back, but it hasn't. No, I don't like this line at all. I'm gonna to have to keep going. I feel like I've committed to it. If I can just get rid of that line I'm risking stretching them too much, but it's, it's just something I'm going to have to do because I can't cope with that. Can you see the line here? It just You can see where the ridge was, and that is not a good look. So I finished all the edges. I all, all I did to finish the edges was just drag the paint over and it, where it wasn't quite um, covering. Um, and it now covers yeah, quite nicely. Um, so let me show you lots to see. Um, I'm going to just state the obvious that these white cells have distorted quite a lot. And I'm a bit disappointed they've distorted. But if you look at the piece as a whole... Um, it's just got so much colour and movement and impact. I actually don't think it matters. I think if you wanted round cells, it's failed. But actually, if you look at it from a from the autumn point of view, it's it's a bit of a a blizzard of autumn colours. Um, I'm back. I've decided. I'm just not happy with this white section. I wish the cells were round, but they are so distorted. I think it's a little bit detracting. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to do some balloon kisses and hope that I can add to it, not ruin it. Um, it's just a balloon and I put some water in it. So it's quite heavy, quite bouncy. Um, and what I'm going to do, in fact, I need some kitchen roll. Um, I'm just going to dip the balloon in to some sp to places that I'm not as keen on. So a lot of the white. And I'm hoping by doing that, I can take some of the white off and the colours underneath will shine through. That's the plan. Um, so let's give it a go. I love it. Oh my goodness, what a transformation. It, it's absolutely transformed it for me. Um, so the white section now has these beautiful kisses and it's I've managed to keep keep kissing it and it pulls up the pink underneath. So it's now not this big expanse of white, but instead these beautiful, they look like um, lilies or orchids going through. Um, so there's quite a, a lot of the kisses through there, but to balance it, I've just done a few other ones and I think the balance works really well they're just scattered a few everywhere um, and I just think it works it it works I absolutely love this now I've gone from it being okay but disappointed to wow I really like this um, so I'll be back when it's dry 
So here it is dry. I'm so pleased with it. It's worked so well. Thank goodness for balloon kisses. I think I would be trying to put a brave face on right now if I hadn't done the balloon kisses and say, yeah, it's okay. But actually now it is okay. Thank goodness for the balloon kisses. That white area there would have really bothered me if I hadn't have done the balloon kisses. It would have stood out like a sore thumb. Um, so as it is, it's turned out really pretty. Um, I've, I don't normally do many balloon kisses. I'm not always a massive fan of them, but I think it's absolutely saved it on this, or saved my bacon on this piece. So let's go, let's go have a look at the, the kisses. Isn't that pretty? It's just a little, like a little flower. Really, really pretty. The colours have come out really well. So you've got the, such bright colours next to each other without them muddying. There's a quite a subtle balloon kiss there and up there. Orange and green. And there. And then if we get into this bit here, I did quite a few balloon kisses over the same area. And what that did was removed some of the white and then found the pinky, this pinky colour underneath. So it just broke up that white. Otherwise it would have been such a solid band of white. That green, I'm loving that green. As it mixes with the white, it's just so bright. And just there as well. So this is number five, complete number five of the series. So again, totally, totally different. What a contrast, but I'm really pleased with it. Great, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel. I've got one more painting left to do in this series. Um, so that will be out soon. Great. Take care, everyone. Bye.